Yeah. How many of you ever heard that story? That man that was the top chess player in the world. And he wrote his book and called One More Check. One more check. But in that book, he found himself playing a spiritual battle. I'm not preaching this chest this morning, so don't take this the wrong way. My brother, he said he played a game with the devil. And he said, he said he had no more moves. But it said a man passed by, there was a there was a drawing and put it to a place where people come a museum. And it was called Check Me. And it said there was no more moves that he lost to the devil. But in this book it said this man came to the museum not one, not two, but five days, Brother Mark. And he would just gaze at this picture of this devil on one side and this man on the other side. Said he would look at it, Brother Jimmy, and he would walk away and he would pace the floor and he would come back and he'd look again. This went on for a week. But it said on the fifth day, Brother Mark in the museum, this man lay down out with Paul that he had. He said he got one more move. There was one more move. Children taken from me. And I see many. 
hospital, give birth, ask for a hot shower, and never be seen after that. And they leave her own baby right behind. But it's more than a natural affection this morning that I'm preaching on. I'm preaching on a spiritual birth of sin. And I feel like killing somebody. If you don't shake yourself and wake yourself up, my God, what story will we hear about a tragedy? A tragedy. Oh, you're trying to scare me, Brother CJ. No, I preach with the same burden that I preached four years ago down in Mississippi in an old tent meeting with sawdust on the floors and folding chairs. Brother Mark, I preach a simple message on watch your step. And four young people said all the way in the back of that pit meeting. And brother, brother Jeff, they made fun of me. Was I loud? I sweat like a pig. I give it all. I give the devil everything I have. I'm going to give God everything. fighting against him and not working with him. He resigned his church. When he walked out the doors of that chapel, he said he uttered these words to himself and God. God, leave me alone. And church, 
with tears in my eyes this morning. He cannot get in touch with God because he asked God to leave him alone. And this morning I can take you to Berkeley Medical Center and let you see a man that once knew the Word of God and don't have a mind of a 13 year old now. But he asked God to leave him alone. You better watch what you're asking God for. You hear me? You better, I pray, I feel the Holy Ghost. You better ask, you better pay, you better think twice. If you tell God not now, who said it ain't now, it may never be never. I come up telling you, he said, I asked him to leave me alone. And he said in his word, he said that he would answer any prayer that we have asked him. And I believe he answered that prayer in the morning. He said, would you pray for me? And Brother Mark, I pray for him. And begin to speak in heavenly language. And he feels nothing. What is that? He's birthed it. And now he's a nurse in heaven. And now he's growing. And I read in the Bible where two or three are gathered in my name. I shall be in the midst. Amen. Yes. Brother Jimmy, I may be 30 years old and crazy, but I'm asking God to give me so much of the Holy Ghost that one morning I'll get a breakthrough on the Behavior Health Unit and that man begins to cry out to a dog and he hears him. another night. No, 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 no. That ain't what the Bible says. It said that they laid him down, they tore off the roof, and they lowered him down in the midst. And Jesus said, thy faith, thy sins have been forgiven. But they said, there was a certain Christ off to the side and begin to reason in their heart. And Jesus said, why do you sit here and reason? Would it be easier for me to say, thy sins be forgiven? Or hey, arise, take up thy feet and walk.
Oh, Mama Wednesday, I leave to go away for Thanksgiving at the preach the word of God. Well, I received a phone call from Mother Barbara that says you just won't believe what happened. They had an opportunity, but they didn't take it. Oh, see, yeah, you're trying to scare me. You better believe it. I'm trying to scare you out of the hands of the enemy. Back to the precious hands of, of my Savior and soul. You're not, you're not looking at a goody two shoe. No, man, you're looking at it once was a drug addict. Once was an alcoholic. Once was a sailor, my cousin. Once was a smoker. Once was a gambler. Once was a womanizer. But this morning, I'm covered. Some of them don't know what social media is. They can't preach on it. They just know the Old Testament from the back of their hand. That's great. One thing God gave me the ability is to share my testimony to young men and women that have fought the same devil I fought. Amen. But I can look them right in their eyes and say, I've been there where you're at. Amen. Thank God for the preachers they never did it. But thank God for a merciful God that saved us preachers that once did it. But man, we got a testimony to tell others. You can make it! Yes, amen. Someone will come to the piano and get a song. I'm going to close. Oh, my head's so that's upset anybody this morning. I asked you to good Lord up above. He says, preach, I'll preach. If you hear that, every eye closed, please don't look around. Remember, say, God, not me, but to the Lord. I don't want you to worry about the one set beside you, the one behind you, the one in front of you. I don't want you to worry about mom, and dad, brother, sister. I don't want you to worry about yourself this morning. I want you to ask yourself this question. Am I ready? Am I ready, Lord, if you come today? <clears throat> Lord, have I birthed a spiritual child, spiritual baby? Have I allowed the wrong lust, the wrong enticement, birth this sin? God, if I don't get it destroyed, Lord, it will destroy me. I love you this morning. Some of you I don't even know. But whoever you are, I can tell you right now, Brother Mark, Sister Janet, some of my old youth are here. They, they know how Brother CJ is. Sister West used to be my bus driver. There's some people right in here who really knows me. I may not know you from Adam, but I can come back here and wrap my arm around you. And look you right now and tell you I love you. And so does that man by the name of Jesus. This is how I'm going to do the altar call this morning. Pray, church. If you're saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you praying like you never prayed before. Because I feel like I'm up against, I feel heaviness. I feel heaviness. And I need to break through this morning. Right here in this altar call. Young and old in this house, I'm not going to ask you to wave your hand. I'm not going to ask you to throw your hands at your house. I'm not going to ask you to stand your feet till we all come. And you're here in this house this morning. And you need God to destroy some yokes of sin, some things that got you bound. And you need salvation for the first time. And you need us to ask God for forgiveness, to whatever it may be. I want you to get up out of your seat right now. And run to these altars, walk to these altars, hit your knees, and say, God, here I am. Well, I got somebody that break the ice on Brother CJ. Say, here I am. I'm coming. I need help. Is there somebody? 
Somebody will bring God's seat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else? They're moving. Thank you. Is there anybody else? Hey, thank you, brother. Is there anybody else?